right. Well, we just want to uh, welcome everyone. Uh, and uh, we're just here at our Turning Point uh, conference. And um, uh, of course, with Paul Keith and Amy Davis. And we've had uh, just a really great uh, couple days so far. Uh, and today's Saturday afternoon. And so we thought, man, could, could we just take a few minutes and just uh, sit down and, and just talk about some of the things that God has been speaking to you guys? And of course, I, I want to say I, we also have our great friend, Steve Holmstrom, uh, who's just, a, just been a huge blessing to our, us and, and a good friend. And so we're thankful to have him too. So I thought, hey, Steve, Steve was here. So I'm like, dude, just come and join us. And, uh, and uh, so anyway... Um, I wanted to say you guys are, uh, run uh, White Dove Ministries, and you do um, just, uh, well, so many things for the kingdom, but you guys right now have been putting a lot of focus on uh, the table, which is this live stream you guys do Sundays, um, and just sharing a lot of things that have been on your heart um, that have been just, you know, really impacting. You actually shared a little bit this week so far. Um, anyways, welcome, and thanks for, for uh, being with us. Sure. Great to be here. Um, yeah, we do our table meeting, which is a live Sunday evening service. About 25, 30 nations are represented. And we talk about the deep stuff, like we're going to talk about today. Uh, the elements of the kingdom, the cooperation between heaven and earth, the release of the hosts of heaven that have been reserved for the last day outpouring, the preparation of the bride, the manifested sons of God that do the things that Jesus said they would do. And, um, you know, Amy has been doing a lot of research and study on the Book of Enoch, which talks a lot about that realm, you know, wow. <clears throat> because um, the Lord spoke to her, and I don't want to take her revelation, but the Lord told her to pray for Michael to be released from heaven. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Lord tells you what to pray so he can respond. You want to? You want to? Okay, now, that was all I know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of what we've been sharing on these things. Wow. Well, and you know, I guess just on the topic of the angelic, and that's something that I've felt has been, you know, we need to talk more about and, and just even understand how that all works. And so I wanted to ask you, you two, um, you know, just on the angelic, it's like we want to be partnering with the angelic. We want to be partnering with heaven. Like, you know, for those that are watching, like, can you just give us like, kind of a just a perspective on how that works mm -hmm. and also just like how how believers can step into that yeah, i guess that <laughs> okay um i first of all i always feel like we have to learn to cooperate with all of the lord's messengers we have to cooperate with each other in ministry mm -hmm. right we learn to work together you learn to flow together um that's one of the reasons why we do a lot of the things together the together anointing and we want that same uh together anointing we want that same cooperation with the angelic realm with the cloud of witnesses with all of the kingdom of heaven and when uh, i had a dream earlier this year that showed us some attacks of the enemy that were coming and you know we went through a dif difficult time with Paul Keith in October and that was one of the things I saw well in this dream I also saw the prayer warriors the prayers going forth and I saw the prayers as almost the prayers themselves as work being done I saw the prayers um, as they were um, as they were working I saw the angels that were being released uh, in the proper time. I saw the cloud of witnesses. I saw, um, I was told to begin to ask for the archangel Michael. And I struggled with asking for Michael to come because I had a visitation with Gabriel, you know, years ago. And I was told of the difficult season that would happen and what would take place around our earth and personally. And those things happened and it was a very hard time. So when the Lord asked me to ask for Michael, I was a little nervous about that because of what I thought it was going to cost yeah. me to go into that dimension. So I'm getting there. But in this dream, I saw the release of these different messengers of all kinds and that cooperation. And that's what we're asking for the Lord. Not don't I don't want another book about what somebody says or thinks it is. I want the revelation from the Lord for how do we cooperate in this day. Yeah, wow. You know... <clears throat> I had this uh, encounter 
2008, where I was taken down into the bowels of hell, <clears throat> excuse me, and I saw um, as if it were a lid being lifted and demonic spirits being released into the earth. And I believe the Bible talks about how the, the end of the age will be darkness covering the earth and deep darkness of people, the enemy unleashing everything he has in his arsenal on planet earth. But at the same time, when I thought I could not take that anymore, in fact, what I saw was demons meeting in the rooms with people, teaching them how to walk in realms of darkness, which is a lot of the witchcraft we see today. And then I thought I could not take it any longer, and I heard a voice uh, say, look up. And when I did, these golden double doors opened up in heaven, and I saw hosts of heaven. You know, we call everything angels, but not everything are angels, but they were created beings. Yeah that had been standing in God's presence since the creation of the earth. Mm -hmm. And they were waiting for this moment of human history. And when the double doors were open, they came pouring. It was almost like a horse at the starting gate. I mean, they were just couldn't wait for the doors to be open. And they wow. came pouring into the earth. And I watched as they began to meet in the bedrooms of people, teaching them how to walk in realms of glory. Wow. Well, I think that's the, the conflict we have today. <clears throat> darkness has come to a pinnacle light must come to a pinnacle yeah. the sons of darkness versus the sons of light the wheat versus the tares and <clears throat> so on it goes <coughs> excuse me so i believe and they they carried this they all had this golden hue they were carrying this realm of glory so i believe that right now in this moment of human history hell is is being emptied of everything they've got mm -hmm. and we see that I mean, just look around. But now heaven is releasing as well. Yeah. These hosts of heaven. <clears throat> the Lord is the captain of the host. That means there's a community of people that he, he champions, both in the natural and in the spiritual realm. But even the Lord himself had angels in his ministry. How much more do we need them? Yeah. <clears throat> he said, you'll see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Well, mm -hmm. if he had this cooperation between heaven and earth, how much more do we? Mm -hmm. You know, Jacob saw the same thing in Genesis 28. Even the Lord was strengthened in the Garden of Gethsemane by an angel. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> we know that there are these hosts of heaven that carry, uh, you know, our focus is the Lord. The focus is always on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But I'll take any help he'll send. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I want warring angels. I want angels of revelation mm -hmm. or angels of, of healing and of power and all the various, you know, and I'll just throw this one in since we're in the outset of this. But <clears throat> before the throne, you see the seven lamps of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, counsel and might, knowledge, and the reverential fear of God. Years ago, when I first started teaching on this, I saw that under the jurisdiction, if that's the right word, um, there, there are hosts of angels that carry wisdom. There are hosts of heaven that carry counsel, or hosts mm -hmm. of heaven that carry the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. An angel that functions under the jurisdiction or the authority of the fear of the Lord can come into the room and bring reverence. Yeah. Or it can be assigned to a human being, mm -hmm. bring revelation or bring might or whatever these things happen to be. So I believe there is this whole you know, economy of heaven that uh, we must learn to understand, number one, and mm -hmm. then to cooperate with. Yeah that we can, you know, work in unison. I don't want to prophesy if the Lord's wanting to heal. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> or if he's wanting to heal, try to prophesy, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big part of it. I think there's greater understanding being given today than ever before mm -hmm. about this host and about these, these realms of understanding that are being given, yeah. Okay, now just a couple <laughs> other little thoughts on the angelic. And Steve, you can jump in here too uh, if you want. Um, you know, you, well, first of all, there's like, okay, obviously in the Bible, a lot of the angelic activity would be focused around, let's say, bringing a message or I would say too, bringing a perspective. So like even we're just at Christmas and it's like, you think of Joseph, he has this dream where he has, um, you know, a dream where an angel comes to him, gives him perspective about his situation. Like, hey, Mary's going to have a son. His name's Jesus. You got to take, you know, take care of this. Take it seriously. Like that type of thing. But it gives God's heart, God's 
uh, perspective on what's happening. But then the other side of it is like, so there's times when, you know, this angelic is very shifting and, and uh, very pivotal. But then there's also times like in the early church where it's just like, oh, well, that's just his angel yeah. coming to show up. And it's like, it's so common. And I guess, you know, 2023, like we're heading into this, um, uh, you know, I think we're going to see more angelic activity and we're and the church is needing to learn how to partner with the angelic as well. And it's like, is it going to be that common, you think? Like, or, you know, what is your guys' take on that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll jump in on that, and then you guys can also. A couple of points. In 2023, I believe, will be a time of great separation. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a separation of the wheat from the tares. Um, you're going to see a se- in the in the realm of the church, you're going to begin to see a separation of the religious spirit from the spirit of Christ. Those that serve God and those that do not. Malachi chapter 3. Number one. The other point you mentioned, cooperation. That's a big word. I do believe 2023 will see a greater cooperation with the unseen realm. Now, you know, we talk about the angelic, but, I mean, there's this whole orchestration of things that happen in the unseen realm. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Psalm 103 says that the angels are attached to our words. But I don't believe we just go around commanding angels. I know there's there's this teaching out there. Oh, I'm going to command this angel to do this. And I, I don't think that's our job. Our job is to prophesy whatever word the Lord gives us, who then assigns angels to go with the word. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I just mm-hmm. said? Mm-hmm. Um, that's my belief. I don't I don't know that any human being has the wisdom to know how to assign the hosts of heaven. They work for the Lord, mm-hmm. and, and and our job is to get revelation. Now, when we prophesy in accordance with the realm of the Spirit, then there are hosts of heaven attached to that word. Mm-hmm. They're, they're sent to attach themselves to our word to carry them out. I remember when Bob Jones died in August the 8th, 1975. There were three people in front of him standing before the Lord. He, he was clinically dead, had an aneurysm, and his abdomen literally died. And... Um, Three people were in front of him. One was a, a little a lady that, you know, entered into heaven. The Lord asked the question, did you learn to love? She went in. And ahead of her, right behind her, was a little girl that had leukemia. She went in. But right in front of Bob was a kind of a heavy set looking black lady that had a whole host of angels around her. And he said they were so giddy. They were excited, you know, as excited. And, and Bob turned he said, I had one one angel she had like 12 (laughs) he says why does she get so many angels but he's no he was being serious he said you know why does she have so many angels and the angel with him said because on the earth she was a mighty evangelist Hmm. and when she would pray for people's salvation angels would be attached to her prayers Hmm. and go to that person to bring them into the kingdom so she prayed the Lord sent angels. You see that, mm-hmm. and and I think that's a big part of what we will do today. That we would we just we prophesy, we speak the word. The Lord puts a word in our mouth, and as we speak the word, watchers are attached to it. I'm watching over my word yeah. to mm-hmm. perform it. Mm-hmm. So there's more than just angels. There's watchers. There's maybe even seraphim and cherubim, and who knows what all dimensions of the spirit are being released today. But our job is to hear from the Lord prophesy, speak in agreement, decrees um, are a big part of that. You know, we're going to prophesy, we're going to decree, and we're going to declare. That's a change or shift that will happen in 2023 with our way of, of doing intercession. Mm-hmm. One In one place, you're calling for the will of the Lord. The other place you have the will, you prophesy. I was just going to talk for just a minute about the watchers. I have, I'm just going to read a little part from a, this little journal entry that I had written down in my time of just processing with the Lord, throwing out all the old things of what I thought I once knew about um, the unseen realm. Only not all, not all of it. I mean, there's things that you know are of God and there's no question about it. There's some things that we were taught by man that aren't necessarily right. So I'm putting all those things aside, and whatever remains, that's what I want moving forward into 2023. And this is what I had written down. The bride commands his word. They are the voice of his word. 
The watchers, like he said, they watch over his word. They are the guardians of his word. Angels perform his word. They carry it where it's intended. The cloud of witnesses are of the body of the bride, cooperating with the Holy Spirit for the perfection of the bride. For he makes his angels winds, his ministers a flames of fire. The remnant on the earth today is longing that we may come to the true knowledge of God and learn this cooperation with heaven. Everything is about the execution of his word, all of it. So we're not asking for angels. And, and it is, we do have them for our per, protection, of course, but there is an execution of his word even for us. It's because we have a job to complete. The cloud of witnesses, they're not, they're not made perfect until we have done what we are called to do. And we need all of the help of heaven to help us get to that. And I love this, the watchers watch over the word. You know, there is... Um, there's only so much in the scripture about it, um, about the watchers, but we can see the, these watchers and their job, and there is something that they are guarding over. They have a sphere, a sphere of, of influence, a, a place of a dominion and authority. So they're going to watch over any word that has to do with that place and that realm. And I love to read the, the only extra book that I am reading that is not the Bible when it comes to um, researching this realm is the book of Enoch. And I like to read the, the, the version where you can get all the scripture references alongside of it. So I'm constantly brought into the word about what the word says. But I love um, when I even have that open, you can feel um, there's something about this generation like Enoch that will operate in this place, you know, be able to um, walk with God in this way and have access to all of the things of the kingdom because we walk so closely with him. And there is a lot of teaching in that book, um, you know, about what um, what he saw and his experiences with the angelic realm. And so I'm kind of reading and looking and looking at the scripture and seeing what is God saying today. And bottom line is... Um, the messengers, they're going to be a part of bringing uh, us to the place of the true knowledge of God, the true knowledge of who he is so that that aroma of true knowledge will pour out of us. Or like Paul Keith spoke earlier this morning about that glory will pour out, out of us. Um, all of the messages, they're not for some kind of show and game. They are on a serious mission. They have a job to help us come into the unity of the faith and the true knowledge of God. And that's where we're headed. Wow. Wow. I, yeah. And I, I just think, too, for, for people who might be watching, like the book of Enoch is it's it was written actually by Enoch from the Bible. And actually, I think it's quoted once. Is it is it multiple times? OK, so it, yeah. So people in the New Testament did quote it. It's not obviously a part of the Bible, but it does kind of give an interesting frame of reference to kind of some of the things that, that Enoch had to face in his day yes. is kind of like what you're hitting with those watcher angels and stuff, um, which I think is, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, and Steve, we haven't heard from you. So, um, I'm very quiet. yeah, yeah. I've always <laughs> known you to be like that, but just, um, take it from here. Well, <laughs> I want to go two different directions. One, I've never really thought, I've off, I mean, we always think of evil spirits as having kind of like a specialty. You know, there's a spirit of lust. There's a spirit of um, addiction, whatever else. But I never would have thought of angels, you know, having kind of specialities. You know, you kind of figure they're all the same, you know. And so that was kind of an interesting thought. But um, but the other thing I'm just wondering, you said about how, you know, even as in these last days, there will be evil spirits who are teaching individuals in their bedrooms how to access realms of darkness. There will be uh, those who will be learning how to access realms of the kingdom. Every one of us who would be watching a video like this are saying, pick me, pick me. I, I'll take a schooling from an angel. How would I posture myself to be the kind of person that God would want to? Uh, how do I posture myself to be the kind of person that He would trust like that? Well, that's a great question. You know, <clears throat> I um, I had a prayer I prayed for years and still praying, but 
the Apostle Paul, I've often wondered, asked the question, what what qualified Paul yeah. to do what he did? What qualified, you know, any of the people that God chose to do what they did? And uh, with Paul, <clears throat> uh, the answer I got was that he was committed to being a trustworthy steward. Mm. He says, you know, I think it's 2 Corinthians 4 maybe. Don't hold me that location, but I think that's about right where he said, um, as a steward, one must be found trustworthy. In other words, mm -hmm. if he was to be a steward of revelation that came not by the reading of a book or the, or the teaching of men, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ, there was this quality of stewardship that was so important, being a trustworthy steward. Um, how many times have we seen people take the gifts and callings of God and prostitute them or yeah. merchandise them in? So I think number one is being committed to advancing the kingdom <clears throat> that mm -hmm. you're, that we have been emptied of our ambition yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to uh, that we just simply don't want to take what God yeah. gives and let's go build a platform, you know, see how many followers I can get on Facebook, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of that I can puke, I think, but, <clears throat> you know, because you can see it a mile away. When, oh, okay. Yeah. okay, I'll try, not, I'll try <laughs> my best not to do it here, but... But, um, you know, where, where people, it's, it's the Balaam spirit. <clears throat> there are three spirits that are identified in the book of Jude that we must overcome, Balaam, Korah, and Cain. Mm. And I think to be a steward of the angelic, you know, one must overcome those. Wow. Cain had a, a zeal, but it was not based in truth. You know, you can't, you can't argue with Cain's commitment. He was very committed, mm -hmm. but he had error. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he believed he, he didn't have revelation. Cain thought that he could go out and till the field. He worked harder than Abel did, mm -hmm. you know, in that sense. But he didn't have the revelation that Abel had because Abel was a prophet. And as a result, he gave the right sacrifice. Cain's sacrifice, all of his labor was rejected, you know. <clears throat> so I think that's in the church right now. Korah, of course, is self-appointed leadership, you know, taking authority mm -hmm. that God didn't give you. Man can receive nothing but what has been given to them from above. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist said that. And then, of course, Balaam, I think, is a big one. And Balaam is, I think, one of the primary things we have to overcome if we're going to steward the angelic or even steward anything supernatural. Yeah. And that was that Balaam, you know, used his gift to merchandise. You know, we, mm -hmm. you know, when Balaam tried to curse God's people, every time he opened his, he was a prophet. The Bible mm -hmm. said he was a prophet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might say, yeah, he was one of those false guys. No, he was a prophet. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And he tried to curse Israel, and the blessing came out. You know how the story goes. So he said, ah, oh, now I can figure out how to do it. I'll teach them to go lay with the women of Moab, mm -hmm. compromise. Mm -hmm. And that would get them out from under the umbrella of God's protection, and God, God himself would do what you, we can't do. So that's the teaching of Balaam. Well, that was introduced actually in the New Testament, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the spirit of Balaam where the church teaches error to get people out from under the umbrella of his mm -hmm. protection. Yeah. So we have to get this error out of our belief system. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> those are the things, or some of the things that I think. Uh, number, another one, just simply to ask. You know, I really believe asking is a big part of it. I, I'm, yeah. I'm asking you to send the host of, I don't have the ability to do what you call me to do. I need some help. Mm -hmm. I, need, I need grace. I need power. I need something from heaven to come because... You know, if even the Lord himself, you know, utilized the angelic, how much more do we? Yeah. Um, so, you know, tr being trustworthy, <clears throat> yeah. not prostituting it, not merchandising what God gives us are two big ones. Asking is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, I think being in the word, mm -hmm. you know, not being, I th you're not, God's not, I remember one time mm -hmm. John Paul Jackson he told me uh, he had been asking the Lord for something and asking, and it just seemed like it was never coming. And finally, kind of in a frustration, he says, Lord, <laughs> why aren't you giving me what I want? You know, and, and the Lord spoke to him in this, this encounter that he had and said, I, I love you too much. The Lord speaking to John Paul. I love you too much to give you something now that I'll have to judge you for later. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And that's, those words stuck with me, you know. Oh, okay, <laughs> I get it now, you know. I, I want to give it to you, Steve. Not, not you, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> or me, I want to give it to you, Paul Keith. But I'm not going to give it to you until you're in a place of maturity right. where you can steward it, yeah. where I don't have to judge you for it or discipline you because of the misuse of that gift mm -hmm. or that anointing or that access. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I think the big word right now is access, you know, accessing the unseen realm. So those are just some, some things that I have thought about over the years, probably more. Mm-hmm. But do you got anything else you want to add to that? Or? Um. <laughs> no. So, <clears throat> you know, and, and another thing is just part of our calling, recognizing who we are. Um, mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the age, you know, I, I, we spoke here today. I think part of the purpose today is to begin to identify People have been through so much weariness and battles and um, that they've just kind of given up on their identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you know that the son of God stuff is for this other guy. It can't be for me because, what, you know, and that we've got to get past that, mm-hmm. that this is our birthright. Mm-hmm. It's our birthright to live in the supernatural realm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I am bought with a price. It is my, my inheritance. It's my legacy. And, and for me to live in this supernatural dimension of the spirit because it's in the word. If it's in the word, it's ours to have. Now, I don't think we go around and, you know, like what we said earlier, you know, I'm going to call down from Gabriel to Michael. The Lord is the orchestrator of these things. He knows. But I do believe we posture ourselves in such a way that when he does open the heavens, we're there where these things are being released. That's part of what mm-hmm. I think. So I just want to I just want to add to um, this yielding into the design of the Lord, really yielding our whole soul into it, our mind, our will, our emotions, and our opinions. I feel sometimes like not sometimes all the time yielding the opinions is the hardest. You think of even when you're in a dream, how you can you can be thinking about what this dream might mean while you're in the middle of it. And sometimes the Lord's like, be quiet. (laughs) Just let me show you. Let me give you insight, and I'm going to give you understanding. Because we are going to begin to really get the insights, that wisdom with the understanding. Because we've been given eyes to see and ears to hear. And so we see, you know, the scripture says we walk by faith, right? But we don't walk blindly. We walk faith as our vision. So we have eyes to see. And we get faith, the scripture says, by hearing and by hearing the word of Christ. So there is this something happening with the activation of the eyes to see, the ears to hear as we continue to really yield our opinions because our opinions kind of get in the way here. <laughs> and we yield those and we can move on in to that deeper place and receive what he has. Some of it is our opinion about ourselves, whether or not we are worthy to stand before the Lord. Well, we're not. But because of the blood of Jesus, we go boldly before the throne of grace. So because of Jesus, we go into that place. And um, knowing that we can have that confidence, I believe that's what's coming. It's not in arrogance. It's in humility, in quietness, and confidence, the scripture says, is our strength. So as we come into that in quietness and confidence place, remembering the confidence, we can ask for these things and receive them. Uh, fully. And so can I just pray that for people yeah, that are watching? Yeah. I pray, I, I feel like that is a word, you know, for many of you watching. It's in quietness and confidence is our strength. As we go, um, as you go um, into your place of prayer and you begin to ask the Lord boldly, boldly, asking him with confidence, like, Lord, I believe that because of the blood of Jesus, I can go boldly before the throne of grace. And I can ask you, send me help. I need help. I'm not okay down here. I need your spirit and I need help. I assure you, as you ask, you will receive. I thank you, Lord, for all of those watching. I thank you, Lord, for your messengers that help. And I ask that for those now that are crying out, saying, Lord, send me help, won't you answer and send them help? Make them brave that they would come confidently to you and ask for the help that they need in Jesus' name. As Amy was sharing, it reminded me of uh, a story with John G. Lake, one one of my favorite champions, you know, one of my seven that the Lord has given to me as a uh, prototype, if that's the right word, of what's coming. <clears throat> People that transcended their own day, and he even said himself that he was born out of season. He knew that he was reaching over into a future day, pulling into his day something that wasn't even, you know, ordained for that day. <clears throat> Tasting the powers of the age to come and pulling it back in. But anyway, I um, went to Spokane 
uh, years ago and went to the home that he lived in for a season when he was in Spokane and started the healing houses. And the story is, according to his book, he woke up one morning early, maybe 4 o'clock in the morning, still dark, and there's a park right out in front of his house. So I went into his house, you know, literally, <clears throat> where he lived and kind of followed the trail of that story and walked out the house. And he tells the story of walking up this trail in this park. And he looked down and he saw this bright light headed his way. And he thought it was a policeman with a lantern. Of course, this would have been 1930s maybe. <clears throat> and as the person got closer, he realized it was not a policeman with a lantern, it was an angel. And the angel was illuminated. And the angel came up to him and, and he gave him a word. I have it in my one of my books, verbatim. But basically the angel told him, pray, pray, pray for this. Pray for Acts chapter 2. You know, mm -hmm. prayer and prayer alone is the remedy of mankind. And so words to that effect. But the angel directly told him that prayer and prayer alone, to pray for the release, basically, of another Pentecostal blessing. Now, I don't believe mm. we we do what they did in the first century church. I believe the same presence that came in the first century church will come in the end church, end time mm -hmm. church. But the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Yeah. The, the latter reign is seven times greater than the former reign. I mean, you have all these biblical scenarios where what's coming is even greater than what was released in the first century church. Be that as it may, what they had was this. Everything they did was supernatural. You mentioned yourself. You know, Peter comes to the door. And, oh, it's just Peter's angel. You know. <laughs> another another obscure passage, though, but in, in Genesis chapter 6, you know, the Lord said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man. Well, you do a research of what life was like in the days of Noah. And, and the angelic were everywhere. I mean, it was it was very common mm -hmm. for that realm. He even had fallen angels walking mm -hmm. the earth. I mean, he had, you know, these these high level, what we would now call, you know, we, not everything is a demon. We call it everything a demon, but not these high level spiritual entities mm -hmm. that walk the earth. You know, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. These different things that walk in the earth. My, my point being, if Jesus said. If it was as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the generation immediately prior. It was a very supernatural existence. Mm -hmm. Those two realms were were mingled together in the days of Noah. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. What we're discovering is that people in realms of darkness are doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we don't want to sit here and glorify what they're doing, but but it's it's pretty supernatural. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we have the greater. So why aren't we? And we will. We will respond. That is the harvest, the sons of light and the sons of darkness coming to maturity simultaneously. And so I believe part of this forerunner anointing that is being given that we prophesied this morning and last night is to begin to usher people into this supernatural existence with God, mm -hmm. uh, this unseen realm. Paul, uh, John heard a word saying, come up here. And uh, so I know I'm being a little long-winded, but I want to I want to establish this so people don't, don't misunderstand. I believe the call of the church right now is to come up, mm -hmm. come up here into that realm. And what John saw was throne room activity. That's mm -hmm. our calling too. Yeah, and for the record, we like it when you're ch you guys are chatting. So okay. take as long right. as you want. All but right. um, you know, <clears throat> last night we you guys were talking. Not a, you're like, hey, not false hope, but real hope. I forget exactly how you said it. And, you know, I, I kind of want to just kind of go on that topic of like, um, well, okay, Bobby was here in the summer. And one of the words that he was sharing, Bobby Connor, uh, was about Daniel 7, where um, the tactic and the plan of the enemy is to try to wear down the saints of God. And he felt like this right now, what we've been going through is the enemy has been doing that, trying to wear down the saints of God. And that he's, you know, I think to the effect he's prophesying, like we're coming out of that. And I think even what you guys have been sharing as well is preparing the body of Christ or preparing the bride for, um, you know, to, to be ready to come out of that and, and to have hope. So I guess to say all that, um, I'll say this is, or I'll ask this, going into 2023, um, you know, I know you guys feel it's 
hope is going to be the a, a part of the focus. But what is what is 2023 prophetically look like for you guys? <laughs> Yeah, um, well, you, why don't you go ahead? No, you go no, no, I'm... Uh, okay. I'm, well, I mean, I, I think that here. multiple... I think um, really to, to see the pattern, you have to start with 2022. What was in... This year was different than prior years. We entered a new seven-year cycle. <clears throat> now, some people are, you know, thinking a lot more is going to happen in this seven years. I think, <coughs> you know, I'm hoping and believing that we have entered into a seven-year season of what, what we might call plenty. So 2023 would be an escalation of that, increasing what we have started, um, maybe not even seeing the fullness of it, but certainly advancement. So I would say ad advancing in the things of the Spirit. Um, you know, I think the enemy has unleashed everything he's got in his arsenal. Um, that's going to continue, so we've got to respond. We have not responded in my view, the way we should have, we should respond as the kingdom of light, the sons mm -hmm. of light. So that's got to increase. There must mm -hmm. be people. Now, what I believe is going to happen in this year, you'll see some people, a few of these forerunners, I've used the word forerunner multiple times, but I believe that's what they are, messengers of the age to come, beginning to demonstrate more than we have before. Mm. So I would say greater demonstration is on the horizon for us because it can't just be with words only. The kingdom of heaven does not consist in word only, but but also in power. We got to have more power. Mm -hmm. The church has to beg the Lord for more power. Mm -hmm. We can't just continue to function in the level of power we've had thus far. And I'm talking about the West. You know, somebody might say, "Well, in Africa, you know, in these villages, someplace, people are raising the dead," and I'm sure that is true. And what's, then why aren't we? Mm -hmm. Why aren't we? That's part of the commission. You know, here's the thing, part of, uh, I don't want to get off into a teaching here, but I'll, I'll do it tomorrow night at the table meeting. But, you know, the Bible talks about the Lord's new name. So I've got, a, I've got a challenge from the Lord right now to begin to pursue what it means for us to function under his new name. All right, the Lord was resurrected. He came as Savior the first time, correct? And therefore his name reflected his job as Savior, Yeshua, Yahshua, our Savior, Joshua Yahshua, Yeshua, means Savior. And he, while he walked the earth under that name, he healed the sick, cast out devils, raised the dead, right? Matthew 10, 8, cleanse the leper, heal the sick, raise the dead. <clears throat> freely you have received, freely give. So now he gave us that name. Yeah. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, heal AIDS, whatever. So we're functioning in that new name. But then he talks about this Omega ministry. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. And in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, it says, To him that overcomes, he will write mm -hmm. upon us the name of God and his new name. Wow. All right? Now, yeah. if we can take the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and cast out demons and heal the sick and raise the dead, what can we do? What are the privileges of the yeah, new name? Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, all, and they, you might say, well, we'll find out in the millennium. Mm -hmm. Well, in the millennium, we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to know what I can do with that name now, right? Yeah. I believe, I believe there is a place in God where we can begin to understand not only the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, but if he's written on you and I the new name, I need to know what that new name represents. What, mm -hmm. what does it carry? I think part of that is access. Mm -hmm. Part of that is access. So in, in a roundabout way of answering your question, as we move into 2023, I believe people will begin to access end-of-the-age privileges. Come on. Mm -hmm. Demonstrate end of the, We're going to begin to demonstrate end-of-the-age spiritual privileges that were reserved for the days immediately prior to the Lord's return. Mm -hmm. there, there, you can prove that by the Bible. There are things that have been reserved just mm -hmm. for the last day. Um, so 2023, we have to begin to see this coming into fruition. If, in fact, we are in this next seven-year cycle, if, in fact, it is a season of plenty, you should see an escalation each year of these hubs being established. Um, we believe that, I believe, the things in the world are going to get worse, not better. Uh, you know, we might, oh, you, you're just a doomsday prophet. No, number one, I'm not a 
I call myself a prophet. But I'm just going by the Word of God. You can't make the Word say the world is going to get better. The Word of God says the world is going to get worse. Mm-hmm. Darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Revelation chapter 17, 18, and 19, this system of religion and economy is getting worse. Paul in his epistles to Timothy says the last days are worse than his day. Mm-hmm. So if Paul needed what he had to mm-hmm. face his day, and he said my day is worse than his day, then I need more than what he had, right? Yeah. And so and so forth it goes. So I think that you're going to begin to see people beginning to understand more in 2023 about the seven spirits of God and about the functioning of the unseen realm. I don't. I believe the political arena is going to get darker. The Lord told me earlier this year that what we're seeing on the news about the things of the world and the political thing is only the tip of the iceberg. It's way worse than we think. Hmm. It's way worse than we think. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, I mean, just be honest about it. It's... You know, what, we're, what you're seeing your uh, prime minister doing on the scene, on the surface, is, is only a, a, a shadow of what he's doing under the surface. Mm-hmm. Same in my country. Yeah. These political agendas that uh, they just passed a bill in my country that could have horrible, horrible, devastating effect. They called it the Marriage Equality Act. Mm-hmm. And uh, where they give people the same sex the right to be married federal, with federal authority overriding the state rights to deal with it but they they tell me the people that know that there are some some hidden language in there that can really adversely affect the church because that's the real agenda to, to silence right. the church yeah to silence god's people so this conflict politically is not going to get better it's going to get much worse yeah wow, wow. um I'm sitting here, you know, with John 1 open because I feel a sense of this for moving in. I don't feel like all of a sudden 2022 ends and 2023 begins and it's, it's, we're already in this process of everything that we're saying, but it's, there's an acceleration of healing that will happen moving into 2023. Um, But I'm, before I share that, I'm sitting here reading John 1 just with it open, I felt it uh, highlighted to me, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. He was in the beginning. All things came into being through him and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. So even with the darkness coming. There is a light that is going to pour forth out of us, and we're moving into that in this new day. Um, We're already in it. We're beginning to, and what the Lord is doing to help us um, get to this place is he is healing the holes of our soul. So there are places of woundedness, and I know people watching, um, people, you all, I know many of you, you've, you've been through stuff, really hard stuff, in this last season. And there's a lot of healing happening even now. A few years ago, I had an encounter that I wrote about uh, in my book. And at the time I wrote it in the book, I thought, why this is, book isn't going to go out for a year. Why am I writing this now? This seems like something we've already been going through. But the Lord spoke to me that it's what's coming. It's, it's um, where we are now. So I was in, in uh, the experience was I was hidden away in like the womb of God. I was hit. The scripture says we're hidden away in God with Christ to be revealed with Christ in glory, that we would be a light shining forth him. And I was um, in this, uh, in the womb, I was with Jesus and I see the Lord. I see his eyes like flames of fire. He's barefoot sitting uh, propped higher than I am. And we're talking and I want to know everything. And I see that I'm tethered to him. I'm tethered by a, a, a cord, and I'm, I'm forever tethered. I'm tethered to him. We are connected. Um, I'm hidden away in God with him to be revealed uh, with, with the Lord in glory. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I asked him, you know, what, what do you have to say to me? Basically, I wanted to know what's coming. And the Lord said, we're going to talk about pain. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about pain. And I thought, gosh, we've been doing cleansing streams and inner healing and sozos. We've done it all. And the Lord was kind of like, yeah, you've done that. But we're going to talk about pain. And I was given this verse. And this is for some of you that are watching. After you've suffered for a little while, Mm -hmm. the God of all grace who called, uh, called you to his eternal glory in Christ 
will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And I believe that's what we're moving into. There is a confirming, a strengthening, a perfection, and an establishing that we're going to begin to move into. We already have. We've been talking about pain. People, we've been getting real with the pain. We've been getting real with the hurts. The Lord is healing the holes of our soul and making us whole so that we can carry this glory. We can be a light that shines without having all the stuff all this stuff that we are whole. And he himself, some of us are still getting whole. And the Lord himself, it says in this scripture, will perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish. The Lord's going to show up. Mm. We talked about angels. We want all the help we can get. But oh, when the Lord shows up. And I believe that's what's coming. Um, Some have experienced it in little pieces. But I'm telling you, I feel like I need to talk to the people. I'm telling you. The Lord himself is going to show up. He's going to show up for you. He's going to show up and perfect you and confirm you and strengthen you and establish you after you've suffered for a little while. The journey on the narrow way, it says the narrow way is difficult, Mm -hmm. but it's the way that leads to life. There is going to be some pain on that road, but it is pain endured with the Son of God. And so there is an end to it. I prophesy that end for you is coming, and there's an establishing in this day, establishing in the things of the Spirit that you can really cooperate with heaven in a way you never have before. I bless you with that. Wow. Um, Okay, well, yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, I think, I know we're going to have to turn around here pretty quick, so we should probably end soon, but do you you have anything else you want to? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, just what you're saying just really resonated with me, too. I don't think any of God's friends, his real friends, and you look throughout biblical history and even human history as we might consider the last few thousand years, all of God's friends, he always lets them crash and burn (laughs) before he really trusts them. and, And not one of them ever... No, I can't think of any of God's friends that didn't have to ask, why, where are you? How have you forsaken me? You know, everyone, you get a promise and then you wait decades to see it fulfilled. And it's, and you're pretty sure that he forgot about you before you find out that he's been with you every step of the way. And, and it's just, that's just the absolute truth is power is perfected in weakness. We become mature through going through difficulty and pain but i see even in 2023 i i really feel like we're going to see more and more the protection of the lord like we haven't even before and and i keep hearing the lord saying really when you said pray 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 or john g lake said pray 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 we're going to see powerful things happen when we pray and bad stuff happens when we don't and we have to pray, and even for our enemies. I, I believe, you know, we're going to see, I've already seen, even in this last year, I've been watching people who have risen up against us and cursed us, how horrible of a price they've paid. So much that I've started doing the intercession and praying. When somebody comes against me, I say, Lord, don't kill them. <laughs> Lord, don't punish them. I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous. I'm, I mean, this week, I have prayed those prayers, Lord. Don't hold this sin against them. Lord, I forgive them. You know, you, you know, even the scripture that comes up for me for 2023 is John 2023. It says, he who sins you forgive will be forgiven. What? Isn't that a Catholic verse? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he who sins you don't forgive won't be forgiven. Wait a minute. We don't preach that. That's just for Catholics. <laughs> no, it's the truth. We are going to have to do the intercession for people. Or they'll pay a price. We have to forgive sins. We have power. I think that we don't know nothing about, and uh, and uh, and we're coming into uh, into as we come into these days, we're we're going to have to ask the Lord, how does this work? Tell me what to say. Tell me what to pray, and He's going to lead us. Wow. Well, any last thoughts here? Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to add one more thing. <clears throat> The Lord kind of smote me here a little bit. I held back in something I said a minute ago about 2023. And 
because I didn't want to go there. But when when she was talking, I thought I felt like the Lord says, "I thought you told me you wouldn't hold back." So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm not going to hold back. I'll, I'll be very quick. But I think I can say this in essence in a short period of time. 2023. What what's going on right now is that the world stage is being set for the appearance of the man called sin. The political and economic systems of the world are being orchestrated by a governing spirit that will prepare for this man the, that Paul said is the man of lawlessness. The only restraining force at the moment right now is the Holy Spirit in the bride of Christ. But these decisions that are being made by multiple political leaders around the world are, are stepping stones to set the place for eventually in the not too distant future for a man to come on the scene, scene that will rule the world. Now you might say that's big, it's in the Bible. And we're, we're living in the hour where this is going to happen. So 2023, we're, you know, a lot of these things that are happening politically, the fr freedom is under attack because freedom is the enemy of the Antichrist. And so, therefore, any freedoms that you guys have relinquished in your country are because it's being set for that purpose. The ones that we're losing in our country are for the same purpose. Um, the big obstacle that they have to overcome is, is freedom. They're even saying that there's coming a time, one of the main leaders of this globalist one world order, you know, language said that human, that people will not own anything and be thankful for it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the lie from hell because that's what they need us to believe. And so, therefore, the only thing that they can do is try to fight freedom uh, subvertly, pulling away layer after layer. They can't do it all at once, so it has to be done in segments. And so what we are seeing take place right now and what will happen in 2023 is more assaults on freedom setting the stage for this governing authority that will come on the scene that the Bible talks clearly about. It even says in Revelation 13 that everyone on the earth will be deceived by him except those whose names yeah. have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is not going to, everybody in the world is going to go after him except those that God has marked. Yeah. And we're going to be the only ones that see it for what it is, but he'll come on the scene first as a man of peace. He'll come on the scene as a, as a savior type. Then he will gain authority politically and, and religiously. He'll be given the power of the beast system. And then he'll take, you know, he'll have this economic rule. He'll, you know, the whole black horse thing. And then eventually he'll, death and hell will follow. So he'll come on the scene as those, you know, we've already seen the first four seals released for the spirit of Antichrist producing a religious system. Now that system will be incarnate in a man. So that's what's going on globally. Mm -hmm. And we might as well go ahead and talk about it because it's happening whether we, <laughs> whether we talk about it or not. It's this, this is the agenda. This is the plan of the enemy mm -hmm. um, to yeah. begin to set the stage for this system of government that will rule the world. And our countries, Canada and, and the U.S., are big enemies of that plan because of the freedoms we've enjoyed. And we're losing that because that's the deliberate attempt of the enemy to get to his goal, and that would be to bring this man on the scene. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about seven-year cycles and being fairly optimistic that we're coming in, you know, we're maybe one year into one of the, one of the good ones, yeah. one of the good, do you think it, it's possible that the ugly is still six years away? That's, you know, that's my belief. I'm not sitting here today saying, thus saith the Lord, <laughs> because there are some other prophetic friends that I have that, that believe that we're already in it, that we won't have seven years before this man is revealed. I, I tend to think we've got a little longer to go than that. I think there's a lot of work to be done. <clears throat> but either way you look at it, it's not nearly as long as some people are saying, that we, that we are not being made ready if we are not being prepared for what's coming we're, it's going to be a very sad day mm -hmm. and there are prophetic people in the church some of which I know personally that are prophesying oh 50 60 years no it's not that way at all it is not if you if we're not making people ready right now we're not doing the will of God that's my belief mm 
So I'm hoping, <laughs> because I saw this in 2003, when I saw the angels that gather, saw them with my open eyes, and the Lord gave me this whole thing about the angels that gathered, the storehouses or, you know, gathering in the <clears throat> apostolic hubs and all of that. I saw that in 2003, wrote it in book. And then I, I was shown in a subsequent vision, Genesis 41, seven years of plenty followed by seven years of darkness, seven years of a gathering in. When I say plenty, it literally Joseph said, gather the wheat into the barns, gather them and guard them. Well, the wheat, according to Matthew 13, are the sons of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we'll have seven years of gathering wheat who are the sons of the wow. kingdom, wow. and we'll protect them, guard them, and equip them. Then when the seven years of gathering is over, then we release them. Mm -hmm. Open the barn doors and release the wheat right. who goes into the times of great famine or difficulty and brings in the greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen. Yes. That's what I believe. That's what I've written in my book. Okay, wow. And so that's like the billion soul harvest, that Bob be, Jones' yeah, prophecy. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe Bob's billion soul harvest. Um, because um, Bob really died. <laughs> I mean, I know I, I did. I wrote about it in my book also. He asked me to really write the whole thing, and I did. His death experience was confirmed by prophecies. When he was coming back into, while he was in heaven, dead, literally his body was on a bed dead, um, the Lord said, you know, I'm going to bring a billion souls to myself. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and so as he's coming back into his body, his, he sees his dead body on the bed. He's not in it yet. Two angels are standing next to his body. The one angel says to the other, there is about to be a prayer meeting in Harry Truman Stadium. The other angel says, yes, the Lord is going to do this meeting in that stadium to honor Harry Truman for his role in establishing Israel as a nation. Then the other angel says back to him, yes, that meeting will have 50,000 people but it will only be a tithe of those that will march on Washington. So here's two angels having this conversation before he goes back into his body. Well, he, he prophesies them. Now, he died in August the 8th, 1975. 1977, two years later, there was a prayer meeting in Harry Truman Stadium, and 50,000 people showed up. It's a matter of history. Three years later, there was the march on Washington, and 500,000 people showed up. So the two words were confirmed. Well, you can't make that up. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care who you are. You can't, you know, that had to be God. And that was an affirmation to me that the word was right. Yeah. So not only did he say there will be a billion soul harvest while, the Lord, while he was standing before the Lord, and when the Lord said, I want you to go back, Bob said, I don't want to go back. <laughs> he said, will you go back for souls? And Bob said, yes, I'll go back. He says, go back because I'm going to bring a billion souls to myself. So I'm going to, I'm going to believe that. <clears throat> That's, there's 8 billion people on the earth now. I still not, I still not, you know. My word was 20%, 1 in 5, but, you know, however that works, I don't know. But so uh, then, then the Lord said to Bob, and go tell them that every ministry gift, you read, I don't know if the word was ministry gift, but every prophetic gift, every power gift, every way I used anyone in the Bible will be released in this end time generation. So the way he, he dealt with Jeremiah will be released. The way he dealt with Isaiah will be released. The way he dealt with Daniel will be, you know. You'll have all of these biblical scenarios of people that were used by God released into this end time generation when he brings in the great harvest. So I, I'm going to believe that. I believe you can support that with the word, you know, that, that the end time, you know, the glory of the latter house is greater than the yeah. former you know, the latter rain revelation is seven times greater than the former rain. And so you have these biblical scenarios that support mm -hmm. that prophecy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's not really the easiest conversation to land, but, <laughs> but I mean, man, I really enjoyed this. And, uh, you know, maybe... Um, just as we close, uh, Steve, why don't you just pray for us? Would that be okay? It's here for sure. Yeah. Father, we love you so much. And uh, <clears throat> we thank you that uh, we didn't choose you. You chose us. And uh, 
before the foundation of the world. You looked, you looked into the future and you saw a yes in our hearts and you started things in motion to win our hearts and to fill us with your spirit and to use us in these last days. And I know I can just feel people even on the other side of this camera just saying, oh God, pick me. Oh Lord, I want to be one of the ones that you choose. I want to be one of the ones that you whisper to, to speak to. I want to be one that you would trust with your kingdom, with your presence, with your power, with, with gifts that would transform lives, that would win souls. Lord, I pray for each one watching. Lord, that you would, uh, that you would increase the yes in each one of our hearts that you would uh, give us the grace because it's only by your grace. It's not hard work. It's not gritting your teeth. Lord, we, we can't even love you without your help. We certainly can't say yes to a kingdom life. Uh, Lord, it's so costly. It costs so much to say yes to the kingdom life. We can't do it without grace. The gift of righteousness that you give to those who hunger for it. And so, Lord, for each one hungering right now, release to them your grace called righteousness. Empower them to live the lives that reach through the veil. Empower them to live lives of surrender to you. And visit them, we pray. Send your angels, Lord. Help us to live the kind of lives and to create the kinds of homes and, and workplaces and atmospheres, the kind of place that angels just want to be kind of places where angels want to gather. Hallelujah. Bless each one. Fill them. May your kingdom come to them and each of us in Jesus' name. Amen.